if you're if you're playing really gallant football but you lose you kind of see all right well it's you win some you lose some and when you win it's amazing his football is shit, james it's so so shit. it's worse than jo- jose Mourinho's. worse and we were already fed up at that A couple of the others, the Daniel Craig ones have been good, but um, there's no chance I'm going to cinema for two hours and 45 minutes. Good to know. Uh, right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the James and Flav For Now podcast. Uh, we are back. This is a buffet-based uh, podcast with just a dash of football chat. Oh, Ronaldo, Flav, eh? Hmm? Oh, what? Ronaldo. To the rescue. God bless him. Oh, did they play last night? They did play last night. Who, oh, well, that's right. I heard that on the all. news this morning. They were struggling. They were struggling. Who came to the mm. rescue? Who came to the rescue? Bloody, Ronaldo. Bloody, bloody Ronaldo and his suspect background. Yeah. But, I mean, but what a hero, though. The important thing is, is forget that. Don't worry about that. Don't concentrate on that. Concentrate on how good he is on the pitch going last minute goals. Washes away amazing, at all. Washes away at amazing, all. Amazing. Amazing. He's, um, it's, uh, yeah, he's done. About as good as I thought he was going to do. He's brilliant, isn't he? So, um, What's more important, I, I, being good or working hard? Because there's a clip that was going round, and ooh. it's Edison Cavani, right? And there's a pass to Ronaldo. Ronaldo's not happy with the pass, so he literally just starts walking. And then Edison Cavani, like, from nowhere, like, charges. And, and with with just passion and work rate, wins the ball back. Ball back. Yeah. Um, what's more? I mean, as a fan, I know what I want to see. Uh, but Ronaldo's a wanker. We know he's a wanker. So when he behaves like a wanker, he's, you know, what, what, what can you expect? You're buying a wanker. Okay. Um, so he, you know, believes, he believes in himself. If you don't do the right, you, if you don't play to my level, then I'm I'm not even going to bother. Wanker. You know, is he? Is he's got he, high standards, but we could spin that. High standards. Could, yeah, high standards. But that's, that's a, you're actually, you're taking a piss out of the football club that employs you and the fans. Like Man United fans look at that and aren't utterly, you know, just think you're that's disgraceful. You I run used to, for the shirt. I used to have a mate who used to get so a mate who was like a brilliant he... dribbler. He's a really, really good dribbler. And yeah. he used to get so annoyed at um and he was a Man United fan. He used to get so annoyed at the praise that Wayne Rooney would get for his work rate. Cause he would be like, That's not a skill. That's not like that with <laughs> like work rate's not a skill. That's just basic fitness. And I was like, well, no, actually. I mean, if, if it work rate wasn't a skill, then everyone would have it. But he, had, um, he, he used to really wind him up. He's like, these are professional footballers. Work rate shouldn't be like, wow, he works so hard. It should be based yeah. on actual skills. I get where he's coming from, but that, that, that not all of them do work hard. So, you know, and if that gives you the advantage, you know, a lot, lots of them just don't cover ground. They just don't. So, you know, regardless or not, it's not as difficult to work well you know some say you know it's more difficult to work hard than just be given a, a skill that you're incredible at um uh what was it oh, fucking what's that cliche i mean might like do a, a, a samism is, it, it is. Hard, hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard right that's, like that. that's lovely that's lovely. Um, get, I, I want to dive into something deep quickly. Football chat straight away. Let's do, let's do the signal. I was just going to ask you a question before you go on to that, because it's just related to Man United. Is go Oli's got to go, isn't he? <laughs> He's not, not working, playing well he? enough at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not playing well enough at all. Well, stick around, guys, because I think we. I, I want to dive into that a little bit. Let's. We, we like to dip into it every sort of um, couple of weeks, really. Yeah. We want to go, how many games has a manager got to lose? to lose his job because yeah. let's let's have it right yeah man united were rubbish against villarreal really really rubbish against them I just lost to villa as well lost to villa deservedly so offered nothing really and um lost to west ham in the cup and that's not good enough he's just he's missing something and it's a bit of it's a bit of glue that we were providing last season literally just not holding doing him again. up not, not doing, doing it again. again no yeah yeah no. yeah we'll we'll get you up off the floor but then you got to walk on your own, son. Then you got to walk on your own. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> he needed that. He has got an amazing knack of just getting a victory. Just when, just when he needs it. Just when we're starting to like lose him. 
Mm. He just gets, he does get that victory. And so like, at what point does that make him a very good manager? I don't know. But they weren't, I mean, they weren't great. We say over and over again, he's done amazing to have that job for so long. I'm really good. And, you know, he's finished second last year, which is like a, an achievement. You know, Man United want more, but fundamentally that's about as good as they could have hoped for yes, last season. So yeah. fair play. When he walks but, away at the end of it all, do you think he'll go, you know, like um, there'll be someone who kind of finishes fourth in Big Brother and they were like, no, nah, I'm just, I was just happy to get this far, to be honest. I just, my, my aim was just get to the final week and, and just en- enjoy it for as long as I could because he knew that it just, he was never, you know, there was, was never something that was achievable in terms of like staying there, like being an elite, elite manager for them. I, yeah. I just... I don't, which was one thing though watching the game yesterday and I'm going to I think we'll dive into it at some point on the channel properly but like I was watching Scott McTominay played like at the like on a single pivot right on his own and they were like Pogba go on off you go Fernandez get, get forward all these players get forward right and there was Ooh. this there was a mix of Scott McTominay didn't really want to come and get the ball. He was sort of like, and I trust me, I've done it. Like he was sort of like hiding <laughs> behind like the their two strikers, but also like the back line didn't want to give him the ball either. And it did make me think that like this whole like McTominay Fred thing that's gone on for so long. Mm. Maybe maybe it's the fact that he just hasn't got a better option. And then I saw something on Twitter. Where there's, Ooh. I think Fred's coming on, maybe, or I think Fred might be coming on, or someone's coming on, and Donny van der Beek's in the background. You know where like the bench is at Old Trafford. Yeah. He's on the background, and he's sort of like, he's doing that like hand over his mouth thing, like talking, and he's, yeah. and he's clearly, and someone sort of taps him on the shoulder, and he's clearly like annoyed, and he takes his chewing gum and just throws it on the floor. And Donny van der Beek's like watching Scott McTominay or Fred like sitting at the base of that midfield, not wanting to get on the ball, and. He's just got to be so annoyed. He's just got to be he's, so annoyed. What's he done? He's what has he done? They're stealing his Solskjaer. career. They're stealing his career. Like you, there, there comes a point where, like, at least let him go on loan. Let him go somewhere. You are stealing like precious years of my, this man's life that he will never get back. He definitely fingered someone. <laughs> definitely fingered the wrong person at the club. Something's gone on. Ollie. Something, something. Uh, Ollie, do you think? Might be Ollie. Might, might be you know, that trick he used to do. Like when, when, not everyone, that, you, when in what scenario would it have happened though? Well, I just I think that he, he would have gone into the office and said, like, Ollie, oh, I'm really happy to join Man United. Just so you know, um, had my time at Ajax. Man United, brilliant club. Always respects you as a forward and all that, saying all the great things. But I reckon Ollie went to the toilet for a wee. And then he put something on his chair. Donny van der Beek put like a pencil or a pen on his chair. And Solskjaer sat on it as mm. a practical joke and didn't see the funny side of it. And there, yeah, from that point, he hasn't played much. Done the old pencil bum gag and it's gone. It's gone, it's it's gone, gone wrong. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he's standing, he's sitting there, right? And he, Solskjaer sits down there and just really screams. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just ah! <laughs> there was a, yeah, a yeah. sensible. I think, you, and he's caught him on a bad day where he's like, "Why does no one respect me? Yeah. I know, I know, I shouldn't for this job, but why does no one respect me? They better respect me. I've got. Mm. I'm gonna maybe if I get the new signing, he'll respect me. Donny, hey, <laughs> come here, oh, mate. You're gonna play. Hey, minutes. You're gonna, you're gonna play so many minutes, mate. You're gonna play so many minutes. You're my friend. Yeah. We're friends, and you can. Me and you, we are. We can do everything together. You can do anything with me. I'm. I'm a good laugh. I'm a good laugh. You're gonna get so many minutes. All right. And then he walks away thinking that he's got that right and gone. Okay, now I've got. I've got Donny's on my side. Donny's gone away and gone. I could do the pencil bum. Uh, he'll love that. Be great. He, he he's seems like great. yeah. Like, Ollie seems like he's got a sense of humour. Maybe I could do. This. There's this little Dutch prank I can do, and, and then and then he's been done by he's done by been done by McTominay and Fred, where they've gone. Oh yeah, yeah, good good idea. Do the do, do the do prank. That. No, Definitely no, no. He'll love that. He'll love that. He loves a prank. He prefers pranks on him. And then it just, done it's, that. And it's mad that again. it's mad that like he gets into like he's signed. He's obviously been signed by the club and not by Solskjaer. Because if like 
He's not, he just doesn't. He's just not getting any games. Oh, it's so, so unfair, isn't it? So unfair. It's you know, not. He's not shit. He's good. <laughs> The uh, the patrons, of course, are, are watching this live. If you want to become a patron and uh, join us for our mailbag each week where we uh, answer any questions you want to uh, give us, of course, and just generally uh, literally have a chat. We had a chat with Ollie Sage, um, who's got a very good TikTok about vinyl. And uh, he's um, what I like what he's doing, he's getting involved with the chat today and offering up the kind of... We did this a bit last year, like sort of just lazy rumours. Like yeah. Ollie Sage, I heard he porked OG, <laughs> OGS's wife. That's such. That's the one, isn't it? He's not getting any game time. Must have, must have slept with. Must, must have slept with their wife. Uh, with, with the gaffer's wife, who's who's twenty five years older than her, than this twenty two year old man or whoever it is. Loves loves. Don't think that's, I don't think that's right, Ollie. I don't think that's right. Um, Porked yeah. as well. Porked. Let's break that down. Where's that from? Porked. How's that happen? <laughs> Where's that come from? Porked. <laughs> Is it because your willies looks like a sausage and what is that what it is? Let's know in the comments. Let's yeah. know in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've got any lazy, uh, if you've got any lazy rumours on why Donny van der Beek can't get any game time at the moment, I'd, I'd love to hear them. We'll read out the best ones next week. Uh, Jack Ride says, Mrs. Solskjaer is a cougar, pass it on. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. this is what, uh, I did want to talk about this, right? Because so first of all, there is a. I sent you a conspiracy theory, sort of, mm. on Nuno. Um, What's that then? It was from. Uh, I don't. Should I name drop it? I probably should. It's, it wasn't that. It's not that bad. Um, Christian Hennage. Um, was, I was chatting with Christian Hennage, and he sent me this voice note, and it was brilliant. And he was saying that he thinks, he thinks that Nuno has been planted as manager, because so the idea that he's got is that Nuno um, is like safe pair of hands. He's g- he's not going to be like horrific with his interviews and stuff like that. And the long-term problems that are occurring at Spurs right now aren't things that are going to go away in the next 12 months. They're things that need to be resolved in the next three like years. Kate. Like Kane, like bringing through new players, getting rid of Ali, getting rid of Dyer, getting rid of like all of these players, Larissa coming to the end, like, all these things. There's a lot. Like that was the sort of thing that, as as bad as Arsenal have been in the game against you guys, you sort of saw all these young players, and you go, "Oh, okay, I can I can start." And it's it's the power of a, a victory, but you could see yeah. that. Oh, okay, right. Look, young players at the start of their cycle within this club, right? We don't know how good they are, and it might just be, you know, it might be a bit of a mess. But you can kind of see what's going on there, right? With mm, Spurs, yeah. mm. it it feels like there, you know, it's you're not at the peak of your powers, and obviously you're gonna, um, it's gonna have to evolve, right? And so they've they needed a guy me, after sorry. they needed a guy after Mourinho, and mm. Hennig was thinking that, and I did some of it made sense. Is that look, let's have this guy who can be a stopgap but not really yeah. be the guy that we want and it allows long-term planning to ensue yeah um you well, said <laughs> yeah you said he makes some good points football is momentary he wins the next three games and the entire narrative is different no one yeah. knows anything just yeah. say stuff as it happens and as a bloke who talks about football you can't go wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i thought that was so i thought that was really like although you weren't trying to be deep I thought that was like really, really interesting because well, inevitably, yeah. just to finish off. Inevitably, you know, we and we've spoken about this uh, at length on our mailbags. But you have to do titles that hook people in. And what's good is that I think my audience know that I, you know you often need a title. I literally tweeted it today. I said uh, I need a title for today. If we got anything. But after that, I feel like that there is space to go to try and kind of like buck the trend of of not just saying it, saying what, f- or sorry, just uh, just say, well, hang on, what did you do? Uh, being reactive. Just being reactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just thought that was an interesting point that you made. And uh, well, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I mean, look at Spurs this season. You just said about Arsenal, you can see what's going on and see what they're trying to do at Arsenal. They were bottom of the league after three games getting slapped um spurs spurs were top and nuno got manager of the month <laughs> yeah now we're talking about um, 
He's got to go. And I'm, and I'm, I'm on board with that. I'm kind of starting <laughs> to think now, well, maybe he has got to go. Because um, as fans of the game, it's, so, it's the completely correct and natural thing to do to look at what's happened in the last month. And if it isn't good enough, start to question things. Mm. Um, and if it's especially bad, like it has been Tottenham, been dire. I mean, if you look at the stats, it's like... Yeah, it's bad. The worst covered le- le- less less covered less uh, yards or less pitch than any other team in the league. Created the least amount of chances. You know, it's that that not working or playing a system that means that we don't move much <laughs> is alarming. Anyway, um, he's got, he's, uh, he's, that's so it. I mean, it's fair enough. He's gone with the non-move system, um, and it's a <laughs> risk. It, it is a risk in in such a um, game. Yeah. So look, I mean. It's uh, to, to 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 just address some of the things that Christian said. Um, he's he's a hundred percent spot on about Nuno. They definitely look at him as a a stopgap. You look at the length of his contract, and he's reported meagre wages compared to what we paid previously. Yeah, he I think saw this as an opportunity to prove what he can do. And Spurs, if if that was the case, and we we'd benefit from that, then you could potentially secure your job long term. But the two year deal is almost. Unless you're someone like Pep Guardiola, it's it's unheard unheard of. Most people think, oh, we got a plan ahead. If we if we'd assigned Potter, they wouldn't have been given a two year deal. We'd have been given four or five. So, yeah, I do think that there are there there is definitely a view to what's coming next with Daniel Levy and what he's doing. Mm. However, as fans, we don't want to hear that. We want it now, not fucking two years down the road. We have to sit mm. through what is it thirty seven nearly seventy odd games of football two years between now and two years and the football is shit and it's boring and it's really expensive and it's i, I have to talk about it all week um yeah. so yeah it's not something you want to you want to do and, and, and fundamentally um yeah, there are issues at every club every club has is in transit transition all the time like but if it's going well you're not in transition if it's going badly you're in transition so, <laughs> you know, what is, is what, what Man United did this season? Is that That's not great. transitional? C- code words. Code words after a defeat. Positive code words. Is, boys are in transition. That's the that's problem. They're in transition. Clubs in transition. You know what? We, 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 <laughs> some Spurs fans are still calling this the painful rebuild. What do you think I said that three years ago? <laughs> what painful rebuild? We've, we've bought a practically a new squad. This isn't a rebuild. This is just us being shit. I am um, so I think we've had so many we've had bold takes we've had all sorts of takes we've had calm takes I I'd, I'd like to put forward a new thing calm calm pushbacks uh, so like oh, with works. Arsenal Sharky and you I'm, I I don't don't think you were you said like what's it, what's it on about thinking that, thinking I think they're going to win like cause basically Sharky said they're going to win the next three and you yeah. went are you sure and they only bloody did was- it it was unlikely, wasn't it? I was—I was thinking I was fairly correct to question that they were going to do that, and they did do it. Yeah, but it was a calm pushback, and and he's he's living in that sunshine now, isn't he? he really, is living yeah. in that sunshine. So yeah, I, but I'd... it's only—it's it's momentary. It's—it's—it's it's, it's a moment, isn't it? Because, um, and this is a problem that Arsenal fans are always going to have, and maybe not Sharky because he did come across very level-headed in that, right? Oh. Um, so not all of them, but um. You know, the more famous ones is that they're they're one draw away from a meltdown, one draw. Um, um. So this, they're, they're, you know, they're they're happy because they beat Arsenal Spurs and they should be, and they were a better team. Um. But it's just, <clears throat> just a, a um. They aren't ready, so they're anywhere near ready to do what Arsenal fans expect them to do. They're not going to finish in the top four. Chan is in the league, are they? Um, <laughs> with um, Nuno, and we we could have actually we could have actually drawn that game. Bizarre, bizarre as it sounds. How? Luck. Well, this is how I have sort of held on to my sanity this week. Um, they scored two goals, breakaway goals, very good goals, right? But there were errors, massive errors on our part. But you don't score goals without defensive errors, so that's fine. Then. Their third goal, Saka's goal, was mass. Well, it wasn't lucky because he did the work to get the luck. But the ball, uh, Kane ran the length of the pitch to make this challenge, won it. And 
the ball just fell into Pasaka's path and it was an easy goal. Um, in the second half, they allowed Tottenham in by managing the game. So that was a, there was a marked improvement on what Spurs were doing in the second half. But a large part of that was down to Arsenal just protecting what they had. So you're yeah. allowing Spurs the ball and not... And not um, so I'm not, I'm not gassed up by how, how how we had more possession and passes in the second half because, you know, Games there was, there was an intent to what Arsenal were doing, right? Hmm. But we scored a goal, so that's one goal. Um, Kane went through on goal, chipped the keeper, and it went past the post by an inch. Nine times out of ten, he scores that. So I'm thinking, well, that could have been our one. That's 3-2. That's 3-2. We had a penalty, a completely legitimate penalty. That was just not, not even checked by VR, it, it seems. Three shots. Um, hands, hands down penalty, right? That without No one can argue that wasn't a penalty. I don't understand why it wasn't given or why it wasn't made more of a um, made more of a thing. And then, in the last minute, Lucas Loop shot an absolutely incredible save by Ramsdale. He had, had a great game. He's a really good goalkeeper. Tips it onto the uh, bar, you know, an inch lower. That's that's four three. If anything, should have won. If we, should have won. We would have won. Mm. We should have won. Mm. <laughs> See, um, yeah. No, as much as I fucking you know how much I loathe Arsenal, uh, they they were very good and they deserve to win. Okay, uh, Nuno. Then let's play the game. Uh, let's know in the comments and uh, apply it to your manager for us, and we'll maybe read out a few next week. Um, we always like to play the game. How many consecutive defeats must just... a manager get? <laughs> to, uh... Joe Bailey, just before we do this, Joe Bailey says, let's put a comment in. If Ramsdale didn't have arms, Spurs could have won. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah, it's true. Fucking bastard having if, arms and that. Yeah. If if Arsenal hadn't have had the luck with the goals that they scored and you'd scored the goals that you missed. Yeah. Game's yours, isn't it? Three points are yours. Game could have been us, could have been us. Nuno, Nuno should have said that in his post match. That would have gone down well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we'd have scored and, yeah. and Arsenal hadn't done, we would have won that game. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you think went wrong, Nuno? <clears throat> well, well, <laughs> we well the thing is, they like, if they hadn't have scored those chances that they'd scored, and if, if we'd scored the chances that we had, we'd have won that. So Yeah, we the, the thing is fine margins the thing is, is fine we, margin. we didn't score. And, they and Arsenal scored yeah. three, and it's just a shame because get, we could have yeah. we could have won that if it had been the other way around. Yeah, and and um, and, and once it gets to 90, 91, 92, 93 minutes, the game's going to end. And uh, this is this is like it. how Sol Campbell talks about football. Exactly <laughs> how he talks. It is. Yeah. Um, so how many games currently we've got? Because um, Farker's on a great run of um, five. They're never going to six. Sorry, they're six. never. They're six. never going to sack him. It's a six on the trot. So first, the question for the comments, uh, Farker, how many games on the trot? They've got Burnley this weekend. For God's sake, don't lose that. Um, they've, they've lost six on the trot. Um, how many more has he got to lose on the trot to lose One, job? God. To lose 10 games on the trot and not lose your job is honestly, you should applaud that. <laughs> That's... That's do you know sometimes I think sometimes things get so absurdly bad it's impressive. That's impressive. You could keep your job, lose ten games and keep your job. That's amazing. That's off to two two goals and conceded sixteen. Um not great, is they it? he's got they they have they have no dignity if they don't sack him. They have no ambition if they don't sack him. I if get... they lose to Burnley if they lose to Burnley, like seven on the spin. Again, and you lose to the team that's second bottom. Got to go, isn't he? Absolutely. I actually think he he'll get to already. nine. I think he'd he get should. to nine. I think he'll get to nine. They, they don't. They don't. Amazing. It seems Norwich is the most. They lack. They have no ambition. It's like <laughs> what? What are you? What's the point of you being in this league? But they just don't want to go bankrupt, done. though, do they? How are they going to go bankrupt? I every think they club, need to... every Sorry. club that goes down doesn't go bankrupt. I mean. Some get close to it. Quite but a few get close Jim, to it. What's, what, everyone's celebrating Leeds. Everyone celebrates um, uh, Brentford. Brentford don't want to go bankrupt. But they're, they've got nine points. They've won two of their six. Do, do you know what the big difference between Brentford and New Norwich? Two things, right? Well, can, One, I, can you explain that bankrupt thing? I don't understand what, what, why, why they would go bankrupt. 
by not being ambitious. Okay, let's uh, look, look at League One. You've got Bolton Wanderers, Ipswich Town, Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, Wigan Athletic, Charlton Athletic. So mm. many teams. Bankrupt maybe is a bit heavy. In the Championship, you've got Derby County on their arse, oh. Reading on their arse. From like, and I know it's not all from chasing that, but it's chasing getting back into the into the Premier League a lot mm. of the time, right? So, mm. the, <sighs> with Norwich, oh, Norwich are not a huge, huge club in terms of the money that they can spend. I, the no. thing is, though, like you're, I'm not completely on... I, I agree with what a lot of what you're saying with Norwich. The two problems they've got is that they've gone... They knew Buendia was going to go. They knew he was going to go. And good, they, good money as well. They needed to be very, very clear with the plan that they wanted to pursue for the team to keep them in the division. The second problem they've got is that when teams come up and they've, they've been promoted and they come up and they are, they're buzzing to be up. Like I think, um, who's it? Stuart Webber has forgotten th- that, that kind of um, what that brings. If you look at Brentford and the home games that they've been playing, like the buzz that is there right now, it's because it's new and it's exciting. It's like fresh, like you're playing Liverpool go, yeah, fuck it. Let's go for them. All that stuff. Norwich, it's like, oh, we've been here like four times now and we just get pumped. <laughs> they don't and I have think that. they're all knackered yeah. from it, right? So the mix of that and then not having a clear plan. They've played 21 players so far this season. That's a mess. It's not good. No, it's not good. Um, uh, but what I'm, what I'm asking you is Godfrey, they've made, made good money from Godfrey, Ben, ben Duya as well, mm. plus the, the value of being in the Premier League, 100 million pounds. They could have done more. Yeah, done yeah. Enough. I, I think that's fair. That's fair. That's and completely fair. I've said and what I'm going to say is they they're in, they're an embarrassment. It's embarrassing. Mm. Mm. It's absolutely embarrassing. Like, if I was a Norwich fan, I'd be fucking fuming. Yeah, I'd be really angry. I'd be writing emails and that. I think, they um, are. I think they, Jack, I'm Jack's sure they are. Opinion. I'm sure they are. They don't. They deserve better. They deserve, at least give it a go. Like I, I get. Don't don't speculate to the point where you're. You're going to put yourself, make financial, you know, it's going to affect your your future. And you might, like like you say, like Bolton drop down the leagues and Charlton and whatnot. So you don't want to do that. I'm not saying that. But what they've done in two years, two to- the last two times they've been here, has been just give up before it's even started. I think I remember, I remember it was Farke or, or the, um, the chairman sort of saying, we know we haven't got enough to stay in this, but we're, we're planning ahead. Well, this is ahead. This is two years down the line. Yeah, and you're, doing, you're you're worse. You're worse. If anything, anyway. So um, he, they should be. He should be sacked already. But actually, to maybe was, was, was sacking him be any good? Because someone coming in probably won't be able to. You know, they might not get as good a manager as him, and they're going to inherit the same problems with this shitty squad that isn't good enough. I think he's got to go. What needs to be clear is the plan. Like, what is the plan? Like, are you going to be uh, like? They they've been very quite they've been quite expressive, um mm. and like Brent Brentford were quite expressive a couple of seasons ago. Now they've gone up. They they're not they're not expressive. They they're direct. They're like really like vertical. They like they pl- they're kind of playing how Spurs played last year, mm. but but maybe three at the back instead. So they're even more solid behind them. But you have got mm. Ivan Tony up top, who's like who's awesome. Um, yeah, who might um, be um is the England squad out today? I think the England squad might be out today. <laughs> If um if Ivan Tony gets in the squad, he'll because um Dom was ask uh, my mate's Brentford fan was asking like who's the last oh. Brentford player to play for England? The last oh. Brentford player to get a cap was in was Leslie Smith, great player, lovely touch. Um, in 1939. Fucking oh, yeah. hell, has it been that long? Yeah. Brentford, like it's, it's um, uh, remarkable what they've done to get to this stage, and it's an incredible system. A club that does have a plan, like you said, Jim, about Norwich not seeming to to plan ahead, other than the plan being to get the Premier League money in every two years. Um, but they 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 do, don't they? they? Have a system, they trust in it, and it works. And for a club their size to be in the Premier League is is incredible. It's comparable to what Bournemouth did. I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure within recruitment there is a general plan. They're like that. They, it's a smart football club. The the thing is, is that it's on the pitch at the moment. I'm a bit confused, and so then that is on Daniel Farker for sure. So oh. I I reckon he would get to nine. I I would like just to, so give me a Nuno one though. How many games? So he's lost three on the spin. 
How many has he got to lose on the spin to lose his job? I think another three. If he, if I mean, undoubtedly, the pressure would be so much. You, if we lose the Villa at the weekend, six on the spin. Yeah, yeah I think any any man any manager should be sacked for losing six on the bounce. Okay, regardless, enough. you could be top of the league and lose six on the bounce. You got you start thinking there's something wrong here. <clears throat> um, yeah, Villa, Villa, be... Spurs, New, uh, West Ham. So sorry, Villa. <coughs> Newcastle, West Ham. Yeah, I mean, we might be we might be Newcastle and Villa, but I, I don't I don't fancy going to West Ham at all. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I mean, he's it's already and do you know what the problem is as well is he's suffering from Jose Mourinho's period at the club, meaning we've already endured eight months of absolute turgid, boring football, and this is even worse. And he might have a plan. But after we were already frustrated by the, the lack of sort of flair and just just being entertained, mate. Just going yeah. and watching and, and and watching something that's so dull. It's really dispiriting. Even when, even if you win, it's not it's not the same. You know, lose. I, there's there's something to be said about like sort of Tottenham way, and even in failure, it has an echo of glory because you're playing. That's like a Bill Nick quote that's been touted around. At Spurs for ages, but if you if you're if you're if you're playing really gallant football, but you lose, you kind of see all right. Well, it's, you win some, you lose some, and when you win, it's amazing. His football is shit, James. It's so yeah. so shit. It's mm-hmm. worse than Jose, Jose Mourinho's. Worse, and we were already fed up at that. So his problem is he's he's the rope is very short for him. He's um he's got to be playing better football with that team. He can't. He can't get a, 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 a. He can't get a team out that 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 plays a little bit more adventurous. Look at the players we've got. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's embarrassing, really. Like, you know, you Kane, Son, Lucas Moura, and Dombele. You got Skip. Celso, huh? Skip. Skip has. He's one of our best players, Jim, because he, he's <laughs> the whole game's fucking centered around how compact we can be in midfield. But he's he looks quite good actually, Skip. I'm being really impressed. But, um. But what I'm saying is you've got all those attacking players yeah, yeah, and you're you. the worst attacking team in the league. That's on him. So um, he, if, he loses, if he loses two or three more, he's got to go because it's just what, what we're doing. But then what happens, James? What happens then? Because you, what, you give it to fucking Ryan Mason for the, for the entire season? <laughs> give it, Mason. A 30-year-old kid who doesn't know what he's doing, pro- probably. Yeah. Who, you know, that would be the end of Ndombele if that happens. No, he didn't play him a single minute when he he took over. Conte is not going to come. So fuck knows, mate. We need to win. That's all. The only thing we can do now: win convincingly. Uh, I tweeted as I said, uh, need a title. Graham oh, yeah. Pointer says ham and cheese or cheese and ham. Oh, cheese and ham. 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 Um, no, Tottenham, ham and cheese. Tottenham finally found their level. Nah, that's not a good title. Could Arteta be the new Wenger? Like it. <laughs> like it. Yeah, that, 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 Heel that'll turn. Do. Heel that'll turn. Do. He's yeah. got something though, hasn't he, Arteta? He's really got something. I did say that. I did say he's got... I've always backed him. Always backed yeah. him. Yeah. Um, Klopp we'll versus see. Pep. This was... Uh, so this is the one I did want to talk about just briefly because I think it is interesting. Uh, Klopp versus Pep. Who's been more successful? Klopp. I think that's a really clever... Question that Who's is good. That, 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 that title, we can do that conversation if you want because that, that, that title would fucking slap. Okay, well, let's, I mean, let, let's explore this because if we go based on the black and white of the game, you know, titles won, mm. it's Pep, isn't it? It's Pep, it's Pep. What, what are we asking about his achievement at who's, City? And who's been more successful, Flav? Well, their entire career. Klopp versus Pep. Who's been more successful? What is success? Discuss. Okay. Well, um, discuss. Well, Pep Guardiola clearly, um, because he's the most successful manager in world football. He's won more um, trophies. He's won more trophies. Has he been more successful? Yes, by definition. Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's the value of that, and I don't want to re. Actually, I will. Um, it what it's less less valuable. His achievements, all of them combined, isn't as impressive as Ran- what Ranieri did at Leicester. So 
he, he could win 10 Champions Leagues on the bounce, it still wouldn't be anywhere near as good as what Leicester did. Let's, and... have, a, let's have a look at the definition of success here. Um, okay, because I think that's important. Because, like, yeah, again, look, if you just if we want to if we want to be those kind of people who just go, yeah, it's about the trophies, then it is pep. Of course, it's pep. Mm. Right, the achieving of the results wanted or hoped for, the success of almost any project depends largely on its mouth. What's this shit? Something that achieves positive results. So both of those are kind of winning. The achieving of desired results or someone or something that achieves positive results. Yeah, I mean, we okay, we know it. I was, I was hoping for something a bit more interesting than that. Thanks, Cambridge Dictionary. Scum. Um, but, but there is, a, there is obviously quality and, and, and value in, in what Pep Guardiola has done. Of course there is. He's an incredible manager. And managing that many sort of, managing the expectation and these different players is a skill in itself. Managing big time players is a skill in itself. But if you compare what Klopp did with Liverpool and what, what Pep has done with City, I would say Klopp has achieved a greater task than, than, than Pep Guardiola. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of the, who's the better Premier League manager, I would say Klopp. And they could win the league this year. Yep. They could they could bloody well win it. Um, the one, yeah, who's squeezed out the most success? Klopp squeezed out the most success, I would say. For sure. Yeah. You, know, you know what else? You know what else? Pep needs for his legacy, right? And he could go down as the greatest ever if he just goes to a club... That doesn't have all the money. <laughs> we do this every three months. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> once, like on, go to West Ham. Go to Blackburn Rovers. Come on. Go to come to Spurs. Do it with us. <coughs> um, but, you know. Spurs could do it. It could work at Spurs, couldn't it? Because it's got everything no, you need. Since, like, they, we are the one club that could fuck him. If there's a club <laughs> out there that could fuck him, it would be Spurs. Yeah, hundred percent. Don't yeah. do it. Do you know? What I think it's like. Well, in terms of that analogy of like squeezing success, Klopp was given like all the oranges he wanted, right? But he had to cut them in half, squeeze them himself. Pep was just given like massive jug of orange juice, mm. so he can just pour. He can pour the success. Whereas Klopp is like it's like the sh- success. Very yeah, different. Different. it's like a chef, right? He's given all the best ingredients. He's going to make a better meal, isn't he? It's just yeah, yeah. Um, but if he started with Tesco's value stuff or no frills, he can only do so much with what he's given. It's true, and he's like it is ma- the consistency of that Liverpool squad. Like for it not to need that kind of overhaul. Robertson plays every game. Like Salah plays every game. Mane plays every game. Like mm. you think of the changes that that Man City make all the time. It's astounding how well they do. It is astounding. Um, yeah, big game between those two, obviously, this weekend. Mm. Um, and uh, whoever wins that, of course, will be considered the better manager forever. And that'll be yeah. the end of that. That discussion won't happen again. I mean, um, what, 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 what is that fallout? Like, if Liverpool beat Man City, like, what, I really hope Liverpool narrative... win that, but just to make it interesting, to be honest. Because if, well, if Man City destroy them, then you're like, uh. well, they're four points clear of Man City if they win. Hang on a minute. Maybe, so maybe, jump, maybe we need to give Liverpool some glue, Flav. Just think about no, it. Just think about it. Given a fucking, they've had enough. For fuck's sake, they've won a Champions League and a league. They're not getting full support. Fuck them. Okay, I'm just putting it out there. I want Can I just say, Man City have only conceded one goal this season against the mighty Spurs. The only team that could break through them. <laughs> break through. Yeah. Mighty, mighty Tottenham Hotspur. A lot of pressure, wasn't it, in that game? I think you guys had. Right, let's, uh, enough football chat. Enough of that. Way too much, really. People be fuming. Um, in the chat, actually, people are saying Klopp generally. Uh, yeah, people are all saying Klopp, are they? Anyway, uh, right. Comment of the week. ACG. It's got 51 likes. I just don't know what this says about this community we've got here. James, you should have asked Chris Wilder to pick his best starting 11 based on the quality of Wang. Yeah. 51 likes. 51 people moved their mouse and went, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good point, that. <laughs> uh, Owen yeah. Taylor with a reply. I feel like Wilder is more of a ball man than a wang man. I just feel he would appreciate a great heavy sack. Probably why we got yeah. on. 
Jim? Jim, it's <laughs> good. good. <laughs> this is horrible. How do I know you've got such massive balls? I can't remember how I found that out. <laughs> I don't think they are. I think it's. I think you're. I don't think it's that. I think it's. I think that's a Some, positive spin. I think that's I mean, a positive spin on the, on the bit on sitting on top of the balls. Um, is it like? Is is it? But well, basically, this is what I do. Right, I've done this so many times. Is I'll some something will be said that was funny, and you'll make it true. Well, I will repeat it so much that I eventually <laughs> think it's true as well. Right, and this the other thing. The one is when. <laughs> um, my my mate Alex from Bristol on the Fighting Cop podcast. I made this story up that he drove to Birmingham City from London to watch David Bentley play for Burnley just because he likes him. Like he left Spurs <laughs> and he drove. He chose to give up that amount of time to drive and watch a team he doesn't support and an average player that played for Spurs like four years prior. It isn't true. He never did it. But I've mm. said it so many times. I I actually believe it. And I called him out. I was like, I'm not going to make that up, am I? I did. I made it up and made it true in my own head. What, what it was is kind true? of like a Alan Partridge driving to Dundee barefoot. <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, last mm. week we had some... Um, I think we got undone by uh, what's known as a copy pasta. Uh, do you know what that is? Copy... Is that when people... It's basically kind of stories that get... Thing. Yeah, it's basically stories that just get like copied and pasted like... Yeah, we've done that. Had that happen to us a few times, haven't we? I know. So it happened with Peter Beardsley last week. Um, and apparently that's uh, from Atletico Mints, the uh, Peter Beardsley story that we spoke about, about him being tired. Um, but... <laughs> <a bit> did... tired. <laughs> <laughs> that that now you said that, rat. that's exactly the kind of thing that the Bob Mortimer would come out with. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, but uh, we do have our new bit, which is called I Met, insert name here, once. Um, Jamie Westcar. I once bumped into Yap Stam in a Wagamama's in Reading Town Centre. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. I'm going to read this once. Right. I got done by this. Jamie Westcar. I once bumped into Yap Stam in a Wagamama's in Reading Town Centre a few hours after he was linked to join the club as manager. Having just seen the rumours, I approached him to see if they were true. He looked up at me uh, as a raw smile crept on his face. Before I could utter another word, he stood up from his wife and kids, dragged me into the men's toilets and began fingering me whilst whispering, I'm red, I'm reading till I die on repeat. Overall sound bloke, really down to earth. <laughs> That's your one, isn't it? Yes, that is mine. He, he, the amount of time that comes up is unreal. Still get people. Is that your greatest achievement? I hope not. <laughs> Fucking tweet. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good tweet. Yeah, it's a good tweet. I laughed when I when I was writing and thinking about thinking it up in my head. I nicked it off someone else. I didn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like it's been just copied and pasted and just transferred the name. Someone else mm. said something sort of similar, and I just <laughs> tweaked it to make it sound like, like it was just better. I just made it better, basically. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, but people, but people get really angry like when when they see it and they go, "Flab, there's another one. They're at me in it. There's another one." There's another one. Um, but, you know, it's good. I suppose it's, uh, it's just, just people, funny people and weird to back, see. I got accused. When I did the, I did it for Pochettino, Boltwood said, do it. Tweet it. I'm like, all right. I tweeted it, just changed it for Pochettino. People went, you're a fucking dick. You copied that. You copied it. I, went, I, I wrote it. I wrote it first. <laughs> you copied that. I saw this over here. It was me. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, probably um, in terms of media, greatest achievement. Yeah, got to be said. Um, JH, I once met Manuel Neuer on a two-day Nutella commercial shoot. I was an extra, and I thought he was some oafish extra pretending to be a goalie. I avoided all conversation with him and spoke to Simon Rolfs and Jermaine Jones, or other players, uh, throughout the lunch buffet of smoked salmon and grilled asparagus. Needless to say, when 2014 came around, I felt a bit silly. That, the reason I read that out was I was wondering, are there any people that you became like incredibly famous but you just didn't like and you missed it you could have had i don't know they could have been your mate there could have been a connection there could have been anything and you just missed it um because that, that's what happened to jh um uh, Sam, samism a couple of good samisms this week kieran buckley can strike at any time make sure you get them in the comments um don't tweet me them because I'll, I'll never put them in the running order always always go to the podcast and go to the comments chuck them in there Kieran Buckley, Samism. When my friend was discussing how he makes a good homemade burger, 
to not come off as cocky, he said, "I don't mean to blow. <laughs> I don't mean to blow smoke. <laughs> up my trumpet. I don't mean trumpet. to blow smoke up my trumpet." <laughs> that's that's my perfect kind of Samism. Perfect Samism is something that creates a picture in your mind that makes you go, "What?" What? <laughs> um, but but I, no, and, is... and the Samisons, they they have to make complete sense. You absolutely know what the person said, even though they fucked it up. Yeah, don't mean to blame Sam. Much, we? We're, see, we're, we're seeing him in a uh, couple of couple of weeks next Friday. That's it. Looking forward yeah. to it, mate. I can't wait to see him. I, um, I can't wait to see him. He makes me laugh so much. Just looking at him, I, I, <laughs> he makes me laugh. But the um, he, uh, I'm not sure he knows about this. I'm pretty sure he does. Well, he probably doesn't because it's embedded in the podcast, isn't it? Yeah, no, I don't think. I don't think he knows that we've created a, a pronoun for people that fuck things up <laughs> when they're speaking. Yeah, I mean, it's fuck things up. It feels harsh. All right, make a mistake. Yeah. Uh, Chris Cullen, weird Samism from my dad last night. When f- referring to how he courted my mum, he used the phrase, slowly but monkey. <laughs> 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 After a period of analysis, we realised he was caught between slowly but surely and slowly, slowly catchy monkey. Make up that way you will. So, That's amazing. Slowly, slowly but, but monkey. monkey. <laughs> so, so creepy, isn't it? Slowly, yeah. Slowly but monkey. <laughs> slowly but surely. And, Are you uh, saying your dad, your dad, can you ask your dad, Chris, please? Can you ask your dad? Are you, does he mean that he just pestered your mum until she gave in? Is that is that what happened? Can we have more detail, please, Chris? I'll ask your dad while holding a spoon how we how he courted his mum yeah. and whether or not he just pestered her and in the end she just gave in. Is that what it was? I mean, I think you know, Hopefully think... it's a bit more romantic than that. Always trying to find the uh, the, the the optimism or the um, the silver lining. Yeah, I think the it's great thing you've cool. said slowly but monkey. I think <laughs> I, th- I think the the thing is that you've got that wrong. Yes, but at least you've not said slowly, slowly catchy monkey about <laughs> fi- about about finding your f- the the woman your life partner. <laughs> slowly, uh, slowly, uh, slowly catchy monkey. <laughs> got, got got the monkey I was after in the end. What? That's so, fantastic. Um, you know, maybe it's a blessing. And uh, Marcus Watson, great Samism from Thierry Henry on the Palace versus Brighton game. Um, they were at the horses. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Classic. Right, Buffet chat. Buffet chat was elite last week. I really, I can't believe this is still here. Um, but it, but it is, and it, it's well, funny. I mean, yeah. All right. So we stick with it. I think we're, this has to. Surely this is the end. This but hopefully we can like end it. on the high. Feels like the end. Yeah. Um, Buffet Talk, Uh, for those who don't know, just go listen to all the other podcasts and learn the laws of the buffet. We talk about eating, essentially it's a bit that's gone on for four weeks now and covered, uh, we've we've been, uh, the amount of time must be about two hours where we talk about (laughs) eating food. (laughs) <laughs> about beating the system and you keep you keep bringing it back the people but if it makes me laugh then i've got to be and the reason i put it in there because i think all three of these could have been in the um I've, jim's big laugh i'm award. not blaming you jim i'm blaming the audience all right so mcslash who love you mcslash he's the funny he's the funniest commenter he is just the funniest so mcslash went to a korean buffet uh yesterday oh, with some mates yeah. from a seven aside team to celebrate the end of the season i've never been so prepared for a buffet in my life <laughs> <laughs> Conditions, £25 cost per person. Pretty passy, that. 1.5 hour time limit. Extra £5 if you don't finish your food. And, uh, okay, I did a lap (laughs) and identified the most expensive cuts of meat and seafood before grabbing a plate that Paul Dempsey surely would have been disgusted to find. Again, go back to last week's podcast. I revealed that I was at a breakfast buffet, as was BT Sports, Paul Dempsey, and Paul Dempsey said... (laughs) To the man um, who was putting on the breakfast, he went, you're going to need to get a bigger plate, mate. (laughs) (laughs) Legendary, legendary stuff. I like the McSlash, right? What I haven't thought about before is that he assessed the situation. Mostly, every time I've gone for a buffet, I've just gone down the line. I have no idea what's coming up. I have no idea. I'm not prepared for what options I might have going up. And what McSlash has done... He's, he's he's got all the information he needs to make. But the that's, I mean, at the I don't right want to. I don't want to steal a lap. He's done a lap. But I that's so that's I gave him that tip. I, did you? I, yeah, you do a lap. Oh. You do a lap. It's like when you get oh, into no. a club. You do a lap, don't you? First, just see what's, what's knocking about. See where you might want to go. Um, 
Yeah, so he did a lap, identified the expensive cuts of meat and seafood before grabbing a plate that Paul Dempsey surely would have been disgusted to find. You're going to need a bigger plate. Mm. I grabbed the highest value items and piled them onto my tiny receptacle, walking, <laughs> walking straight past the carbs without hesitation. My mate thrust a bowl towards me and said, I grabbed you a bowl of rice. No, no, no. To which I I replied, no, you grabbed yourself two bowls of rice. I'm not an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. What a moment. I grabbed you a bowl of rice, mate. No, you've grabbed yourself two bowls of rice. (laughs) His mate does not know what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, And push the bowl back towards him. (laughs) He just thinks he's been a dick. He yeah. he doesn't he doesn't know. He doesn't know about this conversation. He's just gone, oh, I've got you some rice. <laughs> you got yourself two no. bowls of rice, mate. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. No, no, you haven't. No, 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 no. <laughs> you got yourself two bowls of rice. Uh, when one of the I'm owners not an idiot. <laughs> when one of the owners handed us the bill approximately two hours after we'd entered, I was getting up for my eighth or ninth plate. He looked utterly dejected. He knew he'd lost this battle. Well Good done, work, slash, great slash. work. Thomas W. Ailing. You're going to need, a, so hit the, you wanted to reflect on uh, Paul Dempsey's um, words. You're going to need a bigger plate is one of those perfect sentences in English literature, like Shakespeare's to be or not to be. That has a different meaning depending on which word you place the emphasis on. You're going to need a bigger plate is aggressive, a little demeaning, but gets the job done. You're going to need <laughs> to get a bigger plate. Takes on a pleading tone with a pang of desperation. You're going to need a bigger plate (laughs) is for me. Perfect. Here. The tone is disappointment. They, uh, they know what they've done and they know we know, and they think they can get away with it. (laughs) This is it, right? Is that they give you a small plate in buffets. because They know that if you eat, you eat slowly, you don't actually need it. You know, but everybody overeats, right? You, You just, because they're still hungry. It takes a while to feel full. But if you eat a smaller amount on, on a smaller plate, by the time you finish that and it hits your stomach, you'll get full quickly. Whereas if you have a massive plate, you smash it all down and you, you, your body has, to, to, has time to catch up. So you get more food when they know by giving you a smaller plate right. that you'll eat small, less and still yeah. be f- full. But don't fall for that. You need to get two plates or... T- if, you, if you've got a small plate, in your head, your philosophy, your mentality should just be, I can smash this plate quicker than if I did. And then you get up again as soon as possible. Do not let the food hit your stomach before you're up and, and, and filling that plate again. Mm. Don't let the bastards win. Yeah, could agree more. So like Alan um, Partridge take, he carries his massive plate everywhere with him. So Thomas W. Ailing, who sounds like an author himself, he says it's like Shakespeare. You're going to need a, a bigger plate. The different ways he, he prefers. You're going to need a bigger plate. Yeah. Emphasis emphasis on the plate. Uh, they know we know, and they think they can get away with it, but they can't. Now the reply from Todd Godfrey, I thought, was a fantastic nuance on or what was already a nuanced comment. He said, "I like I like where you're coming from, Tom. <laughs> However, there is an option you've missed. Uh, the, with the emphasis being on bigger, you're going to need a bigger plate." Yeah. Perhaps this is the best of them all. Not only does it firmly get the message across, the emphasis on bigger could press the worker to get the biggest plate available to him rather than just the plate one size up. Massive win. <laughs> it's these little things that will get you the victory you need. Mm. Um, L- Lewis Lawrence, one of the most important parts. Of- so, okay, this might be the new side angle of it. One of the most important parts of a fried breakfast or breakfast buffet is the final mouthful. For me, it has to be the breakfast quadruple. For my final mouthful, I like to leave a piece of sausage, bacon, piece of bacon, piece of hash brown, and a piece of fried egg. Must contain yolk, obviously. I for years I used to just I just cut round the yolk, or or like with a with a gentle border of uh, of of egg white, and just get get the other bit done so I can really just enjoy the yolk. Anyway, (laughs) and. The order these items are forked is also I important. Start, breakfast, with the, start with the start with the more breakfast consolidated. Quadruple. Yeah, this is, ama- this is so, amazing. Go so on. the breakfast quadruple is piece of sausage, piece of bacon, piece of hash brown, piece of fried egg. The order is important fork. as well. Start with the more consolidated, like sausage. Hash browns must be last to prevent it falling apart. They do fall apart. They do fall apart. It's, but they are they're, they're essential. Mm. I, I I absolutely love that. What's your, what's the last? 
I can tell you exactly what's what's the last thing on my plate when I've had a fry up. It's usually a bit of white of the egg. There's something there. Oh, you leave there is... white. No, I eat it. I'm just saying it's the last thing. It's always the last thing on the plate. It's a bit of the white. There'll be a few beans, mm. a fair bit of bean juice, and there'll always, always, there'll always be a quarter of toast. Quarter and toast. you use that to mop it all up. Last I quite one. like. Oh. I quite like to leave the. I I often quite like to leave the um the meat the meat bits to the end. So like um. What you you've just got a whole sausage at I the think, end of your. Yeah. You're mad. The, you're well, mad. The, well, not a whole sausage, but you've like, finished everything else and you've just got a whole sausage and that's what you like to do. Flap, 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 flap. You made a grave so, mistake here, thinking right. that I've got one sausage on my plate. <laughs> of I've course, got, how many sausages? I've, I've got three at least. What? I, mean, I might even. That's mad. Well, three if, if it's sausages. buffet, if it's buffet, then I might, I might go up just for, a, just for a sausage serving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's I might just go. Okay, well, we've had. That's been a lovely fried breakfast. I'm now going to have my plate of sausages. I might go and do that because I bloody love sausages, don't I? I know, uh, I know you love sausages. I just think three, three's a lot. Um. And breakfast buffets are different, I think, to, to all you eat Chinese buffets. Okay. Anyway, um, what's your favourite bit of a fry up then, Jim? So I'm, I'm I actually will. It. Do you know what I will often have? I do really, yeah. really like black pudding. Do you? Yeah, so I'll often enjoy pig's that blood. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, well I'm, I'm a veggie, so I can't have that option. But what's white pudding? I don't know. I, I saw that the other day. It was on, on offer. There's a beautiful... An absolutely banging garden centre, right? Not usually hype, that much hyped about garden centres, to be we honest. We are getting older, aren't we? Jesus. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I won't deny it. I do like a good garden centre, right? Um, and they had, they had, I offered white pudding, and I wasn't sure what it was. Um, yeah, My missus doesn't sure. like black pudding, so she didn't go for the white pudding. But uh, not sure about it. Like, so like so I might be black pudding. So I, I think you can't have it. it Fry-up's completely ruined if it doesn't have fried egg. People have scrambled eggs with their fry-up. Absolute wankers. Yeah, you've got to be very careful with scrambled eggs because, especially at a buffet, because you could yeah. get hit Just by some egg juice and egg water. It's egg juice in egg there, water. and they've been steamed, stewed. It's almost like a stewed egg. <laughs> you know, that's a lot. That's a big post. I know. I just um, I'll, I'll save that. I'll save that for next week. That one. I do just want to do this final one. On. Um, because uh, on the hash, because hash brown, I think will remain be near the end. It won't be right at the start. Um, mm. But Mr. Stewart said this: Bre- breakfast buffet chat, no trimmings. Oh yeah, he wrote, so he wrote a long version, and I replied going too long, mate. And then he wrote went so he's now written me a shorter version, which is nice. this: uh, recently I had a brainwave whilst filling my nine pound Premier Inn breakfast buffet plate with the tried and tested two sausage, two bacon tomato, fried egg, hash browns, black pudding. Interesting for a buffet. Ladle of mushrooms and beans. Instead of reaching over for the bread and stand for the rotation toaster, I stared down at the hash brown triangles on my plate, carefully manoeuvred them into a neat square, slid the egg atop the newly formed hash brown bed. This can be used (laughs) however else uh, you use your bread. And I already thought that I was winning. Uh, Hang on. This, oh, sorry. So he makes a hash brown bed, right? So yeah, this can be used yeah. uh, however however else you use your bread. So instead yeah, of made toast... A bread out of hash browns. Like, yeah, fucking genius. That is genius. I already thought that I was winning, not having to fill up on bread and getting a slightly more premium item. I sat down with my new method and tucked into four portions of the aforementioned breakfast, along with two heated up croissants and jam to round it off nicely. Yeah, finish off with a little bit of sweetness is, is a nice touch if you do want to I, go down I generally route. can't. I, I generally can't. I can't get past one plate on breakfast. So f- completely full. Okay. Um, no one likes grilled tomatoes either, do they? No, like, you no, sort of, do you know what you do? You eat you it because it. Well, you know, but you eat it because you go, oh, I probably should get some form of nuke. It's like <laughs> it's like well, it's like a little side salad, go, well, I'll eat that because I'm gonna get to hoover up all this in a minute. It I, the true, amount of no, time no. you just when you walk you go around the breakfast buffet and you're looking at people's plates to see what they see, see how they've coped. And uh and there'll always be rogue tomato just yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. It's too. It's it's quite a beige plate. Otherwise, just there for a bit of colour. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we finish off Flav with a bit of gym chat. Um, no, okay. no angry comments from me this week. But we have got some good tips for people. Um, Red Vlad sixty eight. Um, he just first of all wanted to give you a shout out, Flav. I know you've been working on your bi arms. Uh, had yeah. a, a tough week last week, uh, and, yeah. and, and you're a bit unwell this week. So I haven't been able to go, and I'm out of car, so I'm starting to wither away again. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah. But Red Vlad said, uh, as a bisexual slug, I can only support and endorse Flav's arms for being a bit more experimental. On a separate yeah. but related note, the idea that Flav's arms have an independent sexual identity for the rest of Flav is also hilarious to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, when you when when they're as um, defined as as they are, or they were last week, yeah, they um, I think they just they're they're, they're an entity in their own own right. <laughs> Really. Yeah, and it's I think with arms, it's they're they're by arms because they're for the ladies and the gents to enjoy. Anyone who wants it can get it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ben Statham. So last week I was talking about how annoyed I was at this bloke um, who thought he was the man with his bag um, and got in my in my gym bubble. And um, but I was at the gym this week, and there was a moment where I was I kind of wanted to go up to someone saying like, "How long are you going to be, mate?" And of course, <laughs> I, of course, I didn't because uh, yeah, what was he on? Uh, it was a it was a woman who was on the shame on you. It was a woman uh, who was doing the squats, and I wanted to do. I'm getting into that one, the old squat one. Oh, um, the power lift bar. Because I, I, here's something. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'm, I I do this quite a lot. And I think I don't know if it's a bloke thing, um, but so say this is my bed, and say I'm like taking my trousers off or something. I'll go like this and just leave my head on it, <laughs> and just lean. That what? Way. I'll just like lean that way, just to, like instead what? of like you put your head like, on bending or like taking my socks off. I'll just go like that, and just take them off that. Way. What and rest your head on the bed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. Why are you that's bringing... how unflexible I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask you, there's a question for people. What's something that you're you're so unflexible that you have to do? Fi- finish that comment. I'd love to know. Yeah. What um. Got. Uh. So, but why are you doing? This is power squats or whatever they're called mm. to build your body up. Well, just to get stronger legs and better movement and stuff like that. All right. So um, I don't like. Actually, honestly, I'm not confident enough to go into the weights room on my own. Um, like I don't know what to do. I don't know what the things to do are. Like, how you go there? How do you use equipment? It looks so like. That one in ones that you go up and down on. If I get that wrong, fucking break my neck. So that's the one I'm doing. Uh, but I've got it's one with like a the hook thing. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it so that's on. good. And you just but, do but, a low weight. And it's not as bad. And the free use. weights and stuff. I'm just like, I don't know. I just don't feel. I don't know what to do in there. So mm. I don't go in there. And I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to break that problem. But so the, you know, um, yeah, you got you got to um, you got to dominate. You got to get in there. You got to get in there and, and go get, get your weights and, and scream. Yeah. Ah! Yeah, I have, I've seen it's bad e- etiquette to... Um, it's a good burn. I've seen it's bad etiquette to drop the weights. So it's almost like, all right, you're lifting heavy weights, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah. apparently that's uh, bad etiquette, I think. Okay. You know what I love? Go on. I love... I love... Hashtag I nice. love seeing... Actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say it. She's going to get me in trouble. She's not going to say it. Okay, good. Right. Let's know what we thought of it was, guys, in the comments. Ben Statham. Uh, so this is good. I quite like this. You should never ask someone how long they will be on equipment. Simply ask them to give you a nod when, when you're done. It's only acceptable to do this if the gym is incredibly busy. I like that. Because it's not like, you take time, but if you could just give us a nod when you're done, that would be great. That I like that. Good good phrasing. Well, what if there's multiple people asking for nods? Like, I can't give you a nod. I'm going to give you a nod, don't I? Okay. Well, like, well, yeah, then I'm you know just then. gonna. I'm just letting you know that when you nod, I'm taking that as a nod to me. Well, or you, well, it's sort of a. It'll be a chain of nods, won't it? So go. Oh, I'm already nodding him. Yeah. And and, yeah. and you go. There, so, so then right, you, can, you go you up to me? that guy. But then you go up to that guy and go, "Can you give me a nod once he's given you a nod and you've finished?" <laughs> <laughs> you're sorted. Um, a J Co. Jim Chat. I think Jim's onto something here. It's all about making sure that no one sees your knob twice. All right. Yeah, oh. this is um. So this was the the how long you, how long towel can be, be down? Yeah. What did we get? We we said about eight seconds, didn't we? He says that is the correct amount of time for your penis to be out in the changing room. Yeah, A Jacko agrees. He said, uh, so it's all about making sure that no one sees your knob twice. You give them yeah. the first look, a look uh, as a cheeky little freebie. But if you're still hanging about after enough time for a double glance, that's on you. I say that leaves five to eight seconds to get yourself sorted. How many times is it acceptable to touch your own penis in a changing room? <laughs> just stretch you know, it out. Just to stretch it. Just do stretch. Yeah, it. you know, you know, some people do and that. They grab their bell end. <laughs> they give it a little stretch, don't they? Get it all sort of loosened up. Yeah, that's not acceptable. 
Yeah, especially in the gym. <laughs> Just before doing the weights. Well, penis it's weights. your dick. You should be able to do it if you want. If, if, I, want, if I want to stretch my willy and you're uncomfortable about it, that's your problem. Mm. This is my dick. I'm not touching your dick. I'm not stretching your willy out. I'm stretching my willy out. Mind your business. <laughs> I imagine, being the, imagine being the third person in the room watching that exchange. <laughs> like... I'll go, he's got a point. It is his willy. He can do what he wants. It, yeah, it is his willy, mate. <laughs> yeah, can you just willy. stop? Why, you, why, why, do you, why are you paying so much attention yeah. to his willy? <laughs> can turn, Let him do what he wants. You can turn it on him, can't you? Well, you never stretched your yeah. willy before. Yeah, well, you're some kind of fucking freak. Yeah, maybe you should. Go on, give it a go now. Stretch your willy. Yeah, go on, just give it a go now. <laughs> two of us. Two of us. Now, go on, give it a go now. <laughs> Everybody, all of us, Actually, stretch your willy out. Everyone, stop what you're doing. Um, Barney, on the gym chat, I tend to go to... The... <laughs> right, so this is our final comment of the pod, by the way. Barney, on the gym chat, I tend to go to a climbing gym and there is a culture for some of the twats to walk around topless. These people are typically frequent climbers and as such are some of the better ones there. I've also noticed uh, that if they're doing a particular skillful climb, they will start to loudly grunt just to alert everyone that aren't drawing, uh, they aren't drawing enough attention. I know from my old gym days, they re- this regularly happens when people stack weights high. I think it's safe to assume these people are high level nonces. <laughs> And Max Evans' comment below was, asking for that behavior, going to a climbing gym. Nothing against you, Barney, but it's like me going to uh, uh, CEX and complaining it's full of coughs. That just caught that got me. That's like going to... How do you say it? CEX? Sex. It's It's like going to sex and complaining it's full of coughs. It's, they uh, love it, don't they? They love. They, they love, fucking they love. love they love working there. It's like, why is it always? It's, it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's like, where, where I'm a goth. Where am I going to work? Well, fuck computer, computer exchange, obviously. Mm. Yeah, fuck yeah, I will. I, I, I've got about <laughs> two, two of my best mates working. It's, it is. It's just, yeah, it's weird. Like, it just you've got to work there. It's the same with um, HMVs. A bit like that now as well. Is it? Yeah. Do you know, goths love posters, don't they? Yeah. People who like um, rock music, and yeah, they just love. They love posters. I find. Um, Why not? And that's your Jim, got, got a question for you. Oh, go on. What is the most dangerous animal, deadliest animal to a human? Deadliest what, animal. The um, deadliest animal. I don't know. To humans. I don't know. Mosquitoes. Right. What's next? <coughs> um, a hundred, a million nits. <coughs> a million hu- humans are killed by mosquitoes every year. Humans mm. are the next dangerous. Oh wow! Four hundred seventy-five thousand. Humans are not an animal, though, is it? Well, no, you're right. You've got to be on a technicality. Uh, snakes, fifty thousand. Dogs. Dogs, 25,000 mm-hmm. people. Testy flies, 10,000. Assassin bugs. Freshwater snails kill 10,000 people a year. Freshwater snails? Yeah. What? How? I don't know. How do they kill? Ugh. Um, I think they're poisonous. I don't know. I'll have to find out. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, finish off, actually, with a beat the system. Uh, I don't know if this is offensive or not, so apologies if it is. Uh, Joe A.O.B. Um, similar to pretending to be tired, like Peter Beardsley last week. Um, a mate's housemate at uni arrived to move in and claimed that he needed the biggest room because he's epileptic. <laughs> <laughs> Worst part is no one wanted to offend him, so he gave him the room. Beat the system. Well there is an absolute legitimate reason that makes complete sense because if he has a fit, he doesn't want to be banging into things, does he? So, right. I think that I think well, that's fair. Uh, to if say. he's yeah, but if he's in a box room, he'll be closer to his bed. I'd say, look, you once you prove to me that you're Af- I, I, <laughs> once you prove that you're epileptic, then you can have the room. So then you could just be lying. <laughs> I need to see a fit. <laughs> If I see a fit, you can have the room. Fair enough. 
Um, but that's what I might know. I'm on medication. Stop taking the medication. What medication? Is there any medication? <laughs> what you go? Wait, you just then walk over to the room, just start flickering, flickering the light on and off. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell this because my brother's epileptic, so I can sell what I like. I think I think that's the way it works. Isn't it? That's a relief. Uh, right, guys. Uh, thank you much, very much for joining us. Um, enjoy your weekend. Hope your team wins. Um, Chris Barron just pressed them this weekend. Come on, boys. Just back in, back in the James, James of Flav Community Page just says, a fit with a spoon. Got to be holding a spoon. Got to be holding a spoon, yeah. It doesn't count. <laughs> That's crazy. Magnificent. Right, Good right. luck to the odds. Thank you very much. No, lo- lovely win against Brum last week. That's it. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Things back on. Back on. It's back on. All right, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It may. Come on. Need it, Al. Did it. Everything calms down if we win this weekend. Life's a good one. Right, guys. Who, who are you playing? Preston? Preston, yeah. Preston, no. All right. Keep an eye, keep an eye out for that, Keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. I'm at a wedding, so I can't go, which is annoying. Anyway. Oh. Um, right, guys. Yeah. Speak soon. Uh, like this video, please, if you're still watching, because uh, it massively helps. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time. Ta-da. Oh.